everyone, it's Abby. Today I want to show you how to make four different types of masks. The first two are my go-to sewing masks that I've been making for personal use the whole pandemic with my machine. The third will be one of the same patterns but using hand sewing methods. The last one is a no-sew version, in case you don't have access to a machine or hand sewing tools, or don't know how to sew. So let's get started. These first two masks that I will make are using the flannel fabric from my recent Edwardian tartan walking skirt. I find flannels to be great for fall and winter masks. They are warm. When I use flannel or other thick cotton fabric for mask making, I usually only use it for the front layer. I use thin cotton for the back layer to reduce the bulk, plus adds that extra tight weave layer. I find that you can do this with other fabrics if you want a matching one as well. As long as the fabric breathes, you can layer it over cotton to create a nice fashion fabric for the outside, while having a serviceable cotton for the actual structure. I like the tartan pattern on the bias, so I cut the first mask where the pattern looks most pleasing. For the second mask that has a seam down the center, I have to pattern match the two sides so it matches when I sew it up. The underside is also thin cotton like the first mask. I match up the seams to prepare to sew them for the fitted mask. for both masks, 8 inches long. The elastic is flat, 1 8 inch stuff. It's been my favorite for masks. I pin two of the elastic pieces to all four sides of the right side of the rectangle mask. Then I place the cotton over the top and pin that in place. I use a couple pins at the bottom to mark where I'll be leaving a gap for turning. I machine sew all the pieces I just pinned, one quarter inch seam allowance. For the rectangle mask, I start at the bottom where I marked with the pin. Then at each corner, I make sure to go back and forth over the elastic to make sure it stays. Then I turn the corner and do the same thing again. This anchors the elastic. I've had issues in the past with the elastic coming out. The seam allowance is one quarter inch again. I finish the bottom with about a two inch gap for turning. I trim each of the four corners. I don't want to cut any of the sewn thread, but also have less bulk for the turned edge. Then I turn the mask right side out. I pull the elastics to get the corners to pop out. Now I pin the top and bottom edges in place, making sure the gap is folded in place as well. Now it's time to add the pleats on the sides. I make sure the side is flat first. I then eyeball the pleats. I have three of them. I think they're about a half inch on each side, lined up next to each other. You can refold them until they fit. Be sure to check to make sure that the other side's pleats are folded the same way so they line up across the mask. to sew all of that in place using the machine. I sew as close to the edge as I can, about 1 8 of an inch. 
I sew around the whole edge once, then I go around again in the same seam line. This helps keep all the stitching from coming apart. And there we go, a completed rectangle pleated mask. I press the seams on both sides of the fitted mask using my tailor's hand. If you don't have that, you can use the edge of your ironing board. I like to add wire to the nose of my fitted masks. I use floral wire from Joann's and make sure it's doubled and about 3 inches in length. I twist the whole thing together to act as one piece, and I bend it to fit the nose area. I usually hand sew these in place. I've tried using the machine before, but it's just too stressful. I sew it as close to the edge as I can get, about an eighth of an inch. You'll probably notice the ugly mark that's healing on my hand. So I accidentally touched my iron when I was ironing my last project, and it doesn't take much to get a burn from a hot iron. Learn from me and don't touch your iron. It's already healing, thankfully. It's just still pretty ugly. <laughs> Now that the wire is attached, it's time to finish the mask. I attach the elastic to the four corners of the right side of my flannel fabric. Then I pin the cotton fabric to the flannel, right sides together. I leave a two inch gap at the bottom for turning. I machine sew one quarter inch from the edge all the way around, leaving a two inch gap at the bottom. I make sure to anchor the elastic the same way as the previous mask. I sew very slowly when I'm going over the wire part. I don't want to break a needle. I would suggest wearing eye protection just in case. Broken needles are no joke. I clip all four corners, being careful not to cut the thread. I turn the mask right side out and pin the edges in place. I make sure the gap is folded under. I machine sew about one eighth of an inch from the edge, again being slow and careful around the wire area. I sew around the edge twice, again. And there we 
go, a finished fitted mask. I can bend the wire to fit around my nose. For the third and fourth masks, I'm going to use the rectangle pattern. The measurements for this are 6 inches by 9 inches. I'm just going to use some scrap quilting cotton for these. I double the fabric, pin, and cut out two pieces for the hand sewn mask. I cut the no-sew mask on the fold just to make one piece of fabric that's 9 inches by 12 inches. I measured two 8-inch elastics and two 15-inch elastics. For the hand sew mask, I'm going to build it the same way I built the machine sew version earlier. I start with pinning the elastic to the right sides of one piece, then pin the right sides of both pieces together, leaving a 2 inch gap for turning. I use doubled white poly thread and a hand sewing needle. I mark 1 quarter inch at intervals with pencils so I know where to sew. If you want, you can mark the whole seam allowance this way. I use a hand double back stitch to sew the seam. When I get to the elastic, I make sure to catch the middle of the elastic piece and then go through it at least four times, securing it in place, before moving on to the rest of the seam. When I get to the end of the 2 inch gap at the bottom, I secure the thread a couple times and tie it off. I clip all four corners, being careful not to cut the thread. Then I flip the mask right side out. top and bottom, then I pin the pleats into the sides. I measure this time. Each pleat is one half inch. That leaves a little room on each side for the elastic and top stitch. Now I hand top stitch around the whole edge, about an eighth of an inch from the edge. For the pleats, I use a stab stitch in and out. The fabric is too thick to go faster. 
I do still use a double back stitch around the whole edge this first time around. gone around the whole mask one time with the double back stitch. Then I went around again with a single running stitch, making sure I'm not gathering as I go. And I also secure the thread at each corner. Then I secure the thread a couple times at the end and tie it off. There we have it, a hand sewn pleated mask. final mask. We start with a piece of fabric that's 9 inches by 12 inches. I finger press 1 quarter inch on both of the long sides. You can also use an iron for this step. I also finger press a quarter inch at the bottom. I fold the piece in quarter and finger press. I turn and finger press another quarter from the other side. I'm measuring to make sure the mask is 5.5 inches total. I fold the raw edge under the folded edge. This way, all the edges are encased. You can use either fray check or some kind of glue to keep the edges from fraying in the washer. I use a sharp pair of scissors for this step. I cut eighth inch slits all along the small edge, about an inch apart, making sure one is in each corner. I keep the slit about an eighth inch from the edge. You don't want to cut the edge. You could also make these slits a little bigger if needed. Find your smallest safety pin. It has to be able to go through all those slits. Attach the pin to the end of one of the 15 inch elastics and thread it through all the slits of one side. If there are too many layers, do one layer at a time you'll eventually get through. Stick through the other side as well using the same method. Now I tie off the elastics. I made them about 9 inches total. You can measure on your face to see if that works. Once I have it where I like it, I tighten the knots, clip the ends off, and move the knot to hide in the fabric. And there we go! The elastic gathers the sides, similar to what the pleats do on the sewn version, so it fits the face in a similar way. Here's a look at some of the masks I've made to match outfits and costumes.
I found that this teal batik fabric breathes really horribly, even though it's cotton. I can't really wear it. For the fancy masks, the green velvet has a cotton lining layer. I always layer at least one layer of cotton in my masks. a couple of bias tape tie masks early on because I didn't have my elastic in the mail yet. I should have made the ties a little longer, but they worked pretty well. I just prefer the elastic versions. You can see how much variety you have to make masks to fit any occasion. Thank you for joining me today as I made four different types of masks. To illustrate how to make a mask to match your outfit or costume, whether you can sew or not. If you liked this video and want to see more costume and sewing videos, remember to subscribe to my channel. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments below. Happy sewing and stay safe! Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. The little bean as well. Hello.